Sitar man featured in my video from this morning, the 38 minute one, with the government agent and the uh, MTV Cribs in the Cracky House. Now, there is something quite esoteric and profound about listening to someone play an instrument really well. Piano, guitar, violin, Spanish guitar, sitar, whatever, cello. There is something profound about someone who's mastered something so good. But anyway, the reason I'm here, I want to talk about the metaphysics of what I will describe as transgenderism and where it might come from. And we start off with compassion and uh, love and say that it cannot be easy feeling totally alien inside your own skin. And uh, it cannot be easy that your condition, whether you want to call it gender dysphoria, gender dysmorphia, some sort of... Um, byproduct of a parent with Munchausen's by proxy. You know, um, the fact that um, things become fashionable and uh, young children see it as the new punk, the new rebellion, the ultimate rebellion, where you, uh, you, you know, part of it may actually be to sterilize yourself so that your, your genetic lineage ends. And that is a rebellion against nature. It's a rebellion against reality. It's a rebellion against your parents, your bloodline, your family. And ultimately, it's a rebellion against God, against uh, the fabric of reality itself, if you prefer, if you're not religious. And um, I can totally understand, I can see where it comes from. And uh, it's very sad that uh, it has been politicized, because when I was growing up in the 80s, 90s, noughties, now we call them the 2000s now, don't we? 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. 2000, 20, 20, yeah. You should come in my video. He had a nice beard, but he just wanted to heckle. We've had transgender people. We've had people who um, identify as a different gender. I grew up in the 80s and uh, I watched the film The Crying Game far too young. Who here remembers The Crying Game with the whole issue of the young black transgender person? That sitar is fantastic. I should do all my talks with a guy playing the sitar. You can tell he did not decide to climb the corporate ladder in an office, pushing paper around for an angry manager. He chose to wake up at midday and play the sitar. So, I'll tell you an experience I had, which was very sad. I, you know, I'm, I'm quite harsh against social engineers. I'm very harsh against people who want to, uh, Brainwash is too strong a word, but people who want to propagandize your children to think of something. Whether it's like, white people are bad. I've got three white children. I don't want my three children to think that they are responsible for the slave trade, for this and that, for racism. I mean, my, my kids are not going to grow up to be the CEO of racism. They're just normal kids. And I always tell them, white people actually banned slavery. The British actually lost tens of thousands of people fighting the Royal Navy off the coast of West Africa to stop people doing that sort of thing. That was white people that did that. So I don't like propaganda. I don't like singling people out. I don't like people being told that having kids is bad for the environment. I don't like woke. I don't like people who have funny ideas. And I think it's possible to have total compassion for people who are very uncomfortable in their own skin very uncomfortable with their genitalia or their appearance or their masculine features if they if they identify as a woman or their feminine features if they identify as a man but such a thing exists as detransitioners people who are maybe a bit autistic it was a big news in the uh, newspapers that the Tavistock clinic that has been shut down by the government it's a clinic that um, was set up to help transgender children I need to rewind. I don't think that such a term exists. It's like saying we're going to help PhD children. Child can't have a PhD unless it's a genius. Child doesn't know. Always looking over my shoulder. This is the new peace and love Charlie. But bad fractals from the past can always spring up and grab you. Let me just let the sitar take my brain to its next rant. Oh yeah, the experience I had. 
there was a, a woman having an emotional crisis. She was crying, quite upset, had her hand in her hands, head in her hands. Uh, I don't know if she was drinking, but she was very upset. And I think the paramedics were called. You know, she was having a crisis. And then along came what I would describe as a, a young adolescent man or a young boy, maybe 16, 16 years old, a boy. But he was dressed like a female with uh, makeup and female clothing and some very bad track marks up and down his or her arm. I don't want to offend if someone want, in private conversation, if someone who was born male wants me to refer to them as a she in private conversation, I probably will. If they are kind to me, I cannot be rude to them. I can't do it. People are staring at me. But to kind of stick on my story, the lady was having a crisis. This young person with like cut marks, self-harm marks up and down his or her arm. I was there like asking the lady, are you okay? And then the boy came over and he's like, I'm female, I'm female just like you. I'm female, I can t talk to me. I'm female just like you, I can help you. And it was one of the most harrowing things I've ever seen. And the dad, the dad of this boy didn't say anything. There's too much going on. There's too much to unpack. You should see on my viewfinder, the clever autofocus is putting a white or a yellow box around every single passerby. It looks like some sort of like government surveillance machine. I have given Sitar Man some money and I did yesterday when I filmed them. But I think children have got a lot going on and here's my solution. I don't just talk about problems, I offer solutions. Isn't it funny how as religion has retreated, whether rightly or wrongly, religion served a purpose, it really did. But as religion has retreated from the Western world, we're seeing increases in uh, mental illness, a vast increase in uh, transgenderism, in pediatric clinics set up to do transgender stuff. And I can see where the doctors got the idea from. I mean, if you look at the statistics and don't go to the angry hate sites, don't go to hate forums, stay mainstream. Look at the statistics for suicide rates and suicide attempt rates for young transgender people, people who identify as transgender. Look at those suicide rates. It's no wonder with one of the highest suicide rates of any condition on earth that doctors, good doctors with compassion like, what do we do? And they've obviously settled on. Hey, come and be in my video. Come in. Come over here. How are you, man? So I'm, do I'm doing a video. Like, it's a bit controversial. So the doctors obviously settled on surgery and uh, doing, you know, male to female or female to male. Obviously not this guy. This is a handsome, strapping young lad. Look, look at this. What's your name? Thanks. And you watch my videos. Thanks, man. Appreciate. It. Have a good day. See you, man. So. Aiden's very confident, he's just a, a young man, but doctors obviously wanting to stop young people committing suicide gave them surgery, uh, removed their ovaries, took off their breasts, uh, chopped off the balls. Hey, see ya Aiden. And uh, chopped off the penis and turned it into an inverted vagina. But this opens up a lot more problems. And you can see the intention was good. The heart was in the right place. They wanted to help the children and stop them killing themselves. But if you look at that interview with that young, I think her name's Chloe, a young female who was convinced by the medical establishment, oh yeah, 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 let's, uh, let's take your ovaries out and uh, chop off the uh, breasts. And she went on Jordan Peterson and uh, I could only watch about one minute because I have a daughter, I've got two other sons. And God forbid I um, have to deal with that sort of thing with my children. But to end this on a positive note, have faith in the universe, trust in God, trust in yourself, trust in the concepts of truth, hope, love, beauty, sincerity, even if you might come across as cringe. And you'll find that you live good, you try and do good, 
It kind of gives you an armor against many of the madnesses, and the world is mad. And the most sane thing I've heard today is Sitar Man playing very passionately behind me. So to any transgender viewers I have, you deserve love and to live a long life like everyone else. You don't deserve suffering, no one does. But unfortunately, in the brave new world of science, many people have uh, politicized and tried to turn it into an ideology, and I don't think that's right either. And I think it's vital for normal people, more normal than me, I'm only a bit normal, to come out and share their thoughts about this. It's only in free speech and in debate and being brave in how we do it. Hey, I'll talk to you in a second, one minute. Only in being brave can we take care of each other and of our kids. This is Charlie Veach of Market Street. Thank you to Sitar Man and thank you for listening to me on this one.